Hi everybody, my name is Heather Bowser and I am honored to be actually a part of this VFP online conference. I really appreciate the organizers for inviting us and allowing us to do a section on Agent Orange. Um, I've attended several v VFP conventions and this one's obviously a little different. But again, I uh, thank everyone for allowing uh, Kapha Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance to be a part. So first thing I'm going to do is try to get my uh, screen share up here. Let's go with that. And I'm going to hit play on there. All right. So here we go. So again, my name is Heather Bowser and I am the co-founder of Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance. And our group uh, works to help build up the community of children, offspring of Vietnam veterans and uh, the aftermath of the Vietnam War on our generation. So I'm an Agent Orange activist and I am, I have been since I was actually pretty small. My parents were actually early Agent Orange activists in the 70s and 80s until my father became ill and I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Um, so if you see there's a couple of two pictures there of me in Vietnam. Uh, one is in I believe in Da Nang right off the air base before they uh, cleaned up the contaminated soil. Uh, the other one is with a child that's actually a lot older than you might believe him to be. And the one on the left is me getting a new leg. I wore my VFP shirt when I went. I am a, an ally. My father was a Vietnam vet. So let's get going. So my father served in Vietnam from 1968 to 1969. He married my mother nine days before he left for Vietnam, as was a lot of times the tradition at the time. They figured if they had nine good days together, then that was great for them. So they were college sweethearts. My father uh, knew my mother's roommate because she had gone to, call, or to high school with my dad. And my dad came over to check on uh, his friend from high school and met my mother. And my mother joked that she used to knock the closet door off of her closet in her dorm room to have Bill come over and fix them. So it was uh, a quick marriage at, before he left. So my dad was stationed in Long Bin uh, in the Benoit province. And in 1968 to 1969 was one of the heaviest sprayed years in Vietnam. And he was a small arms armorer. And this is uh, some of his pictures there in Vietnam. So my dad served one year and then came home. He came home on April Fool's Day of uh, 1969. So really the joke was on him for how his life would unfold due to his issues with Agent Orange. So my, when my dad came home, they wanted to start their family and they wanted to have a large family. But unfortunately, my mom had two miscarriages before me and then I was born uh, two months premature. I weighed three pounds, four ounces. I was missing my right leg below the knee and several of my fingers. So my parents really had no idea because uh, they didn't do a lot of ultrasounds or those kinds of things. So it was pretty shocking. And when my mother went into labor early, it was pretty terrifying for her. And she was pretty small at the time and the nurses and things really kind of turned her away and didn't believe her that she was in labor. And she was pretty fearful because she had already lost two children. So when I was born in 1972, um, again, it was quite backwards at the time. Doctors and nurses at times would call me it. Um, my father caught wind of that and set that straight right away. My poor mother had to leave the hospital uh, and leave me there because they wouldn't allow me to go home with them until I weighed six pounds. So I was in the hospital for several months. And honestly, uh, they really kind of blamed her. At one point in time, the pediatrician in town uh, came into my mother's room and said, 
what did you do to this baby? Um, my mother had been asked all kinds of questions about drug use, about, you know, anything that she had been around. And honestly, in 1972, they really weren't talking much about um, Agent Orange at the time. So my mom went on to have one more miscarriage between me and my brother. And my brother, thankfully, was um, born without any issues. The doctors, though, when my parents had me, a lot of things that they, they would say a lot of very negative things, very scary things. They would say things like, if they're that messed up on the outside, they're usually that messed up on the inside. So they were quite fearful and they kind of realized that they didn't have anybody to lean on. They had to lean on one another. And um, they made a decision quite early on that they were not going to disable me more than I already was. So they were tough cookies and I'm very thankful for them. So after I was born, uh, they really didn't know what had happened. Both of them secretly blamed themselves. My mother questioned everything she did. My father questioned everything he did. What had they done to cause this issue in their child? Um, but stuff started surfacing about a chemical that was being sprayed in Vietnam. And actually where my father's base was, the Benoit province was one of the most sprayed, heavy, heaviest sprayed areas in Vietnam outside of uh, down towards the Mekong Delta and up towards the um, DMZ. Um, and that is because Operation Ranch Hand went in and out of the Benoit province right at the Benoit airport. And so uh, it would, that base would be sprayed quite frequently. And so that uh, is how my father was exposed. There's a lot of misconception that you had to be humping out in the jungle, you know, out there in order to be exposed to Agent Orange, but that's not necessarily true. A lot of times people on bases were severely exposed to Agent Orange, and that is the case of my father. So Agent Orange is the chemical defoilant. It's kind of what you see in Roundup today, but this chemical defoilant also had a negative side effect uh, or a negative um, byproduct called dioxin. And dioxin is one of the most lethal sus substances known to man. So this is a picture of a jungle and this is a picture. So this is a picture of what a jungle looks like. Um, and this is one of my trips to Vietnam I, I don't know, it's probably between 2011 and 2014. I've gone a couple times, but you can see just how still it's defoliated. So again, there is uh, the arrow on the top talks about where Benoit, that is the Benoit Air Base, and the arrow on the bottom is around uh, Long Ben area where the base was in Long Ben. And uh, there were there have been stories where Operation Ranch Hand members who flew the planes were told to dump any chemical that they had left on their uh, plane in the river that ran alongside the base. So this was from a Vietnam veteran in a group that I was a part of. Uh, and it talks about that they dropped excess into a creek that ran right through the middle of Long Bin and into the water supply. So he said, if you, if you showered, you showered in AO. If you wore clothes, you wore AO. If you drank coffee, tea, water, milk, juice, you drank AO. If you ate any vegetables, you, you ate Agent Orange. So again, the misconception that only people in the jungle would be exposed is, is not true. So my father unfortunately started having uh, many severe uh, issues, health issues when he was very young. At age 38, he went into the infirmary. He was a very, looked very healthy steel worker. And he went into the infirmary which went with what he thought was a chest cold. And they took his blood pressure and rushed him off to the hospital. They immediately uh, transferred him to um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, because we were in a small town in Ohio. Um, and they transferred him to Pittsburgh to do uh, five bypasses on his heart at age 38. At that time in 1986, uh, the surgery wasn't that good and it gave him pretty much a 50-50 shot of whether he would live or die uh, with this surgery. It was really difficult for our family I uh, can't even express just how sad it was. My mother, we didn't have reliable vehicles and those kinds of things and to my father to be so far away and to her to get rides and the economic toll it took. My father did survive, 
However, it was uh, very economically devastating on my family because the VA did not recognize heart conditions at that time for Agent Orange. And uh, my, my parents walked away with over $150,000 in medical bills uh, and the VA denying any claim of Agent Orange. So uh, it was really difficult. My family honestly never, uh, never rebounded from that. So um, at that point in time, so my father did survive. However, he developed diabetes, which is also an Agent Orange related uh, pres presumed illness. And then he had a stroke at age 48. And then unfortunately at 50, he died of a massive heart attack, leaving my mom a widow. It was really hard because my dad and I were very close and it just, uh, it's taken me a very, very long time to uh, process just the injustice of what has, what happened to our family and what happened to my dad because uh, he never got to meet his grandkids and he would have been so proud of them. So Agent Orange obviously took a pretty big toll on my life. Uh, my uh, family, uh, we didn't know many other Vietnam veterans in my small community. And we, um, I was kind of alone as a kid. I had one friend that was a, Viet, uh, a daughter of a Vietnam veteran and he had severe PTSD. So we did have some things in common. However, I didn't understand the depth of her dad's uh, traumas, experiences until it was much later. I was teased a lot. I was called names. I was, uh, you know, ridiculed, and I never told my parents. Like between third grade to sixth grade, I was terribly, terribly harassed and teased for being different. I never told my parents because I was afraid my dad would, you know, kick butt and take names, which on the day that I finally did tell in sixth grade, my parents left to go talk to my teacher in person. So that was pretty scary. So when I was in college, I um, started processing my own grief. It had it changed me as who I was as a person. And um, this is one of the paintings that I did it during that time. And I'm, I'm proud to say that this painting now hangs in the War Remnant Museum in Vietnam. Uh, it's really honestly a part of uh, my personal legacy that I feel like I've made a difference and that people will actually learn about Agent Orange. So I've been an Agent Orange activist since um, I was little, but also I restarted around 2011-2012. Uh, and that started on a trip to Vietnam where I met another, uh, met other kids who were like me who have birth defects similar. So their generational um, results of contaminated environments. So this child is named Bang and his uh, hands and his leg and stuff look almost identical to mine. I, uh, I created a group called Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance and the group consists of kids of Vietnam veterans who uh, also have issues due to Agent Orange. And thankfully in 2014, we were able to make a trip to Vietnam and we took several delegates there because in Vietnam, children are still suffering with the birth defects due to environmental exposures. The membership in our Kevha group is free and our group only, uh, we have a couple different groups. One's for wives and widows, but our main group also has uh, only children of Vietnam veterans and it currently has 4,993 members. Some of our issues are uh, mental health issues, autoimmune diseases, birth defects, developmental issues, fertility problems, and you can read the rest of the list there. So this is really hard on our, our community um, because many of us were born with issues and our government does not um, recognize them. One of the biggest challenges with us, just like everybody else in 2020, unfortunately, is the COVID-19. Is COVID We're very concerned about Vietnam veterans uh, passing and whether uh, they have an AO, uh, Agent Orange Presumed Illness. 
We want spouses and disabled dependents to be able to receive their DIC. So it's really important that if they pass from COVID that it's also noted that they had a presumptive illness or their, um, they may not get their benefits. So that's very, very important. And we're worried about the impact on our community with children of Vietnam veterans. Many of us are very ill, uh, have a lot of health concerns and health issues. And so it makes us extra susceptible to COVID. Um, we, we've really been hit just like every other nonprofit. Uh, we've not been able to hold our fundraiser this uh, year, which we were going to a retreat in uh, Florida to try to, do some healing and, and, and building community. Our uh, fundraising is way down and our plans to, you know, take another group to Vietnam has also been tabled. And, but, you know, the one good thing is just like this, is like, even though we're not in Albuquerque, here we are and we're communicating and I think that's pretty cool. So we are trying to find new ways to connect, but it's really taken a toll. We're also looking for new ways to reach out and specifically help our members who are really struggling due to COVID. So with all that said, and I know that's quick, 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 but in uh, 15 minutes, try to tell you your life story and everything you've done in a, in a sec, it's, it's pretty hard. But I just really would, uh, if you'd like to learn more about Kavha, I'm happy to answer any questions. You can email me at, uh, uh, at kavha at gmail.com. Yeah. And if you're willing or interested in making a donation to us, it's a... Uh, the address is there for you to uh, to send us a check. So I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you uh, spending time with us today as we talk about Agent Orange. It's so difficult in times like this to uh, stay focused on things that seem so far in the past, but quite honestly, so many people of my generation and their children, because this is also showing up in the grandchildren, is a day-to-day -day issue that we face. And so I just say thank you again, and I appreciate you. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thanks again.